last video. I just want to do an introduction to rotation, the units, what a radian is. When do you, when do you figure out radians per second or, or meters per second? You have to look at the terms, the words. So let's now go over this bed, Larry. This is the other worksheet that I have not given you the answers to. I gave you the answer solutions to the first worksheet, but this one I have not. And some people have asked me, when are you going to put those up? You know what? I'm not going to put them up. No, 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 no. No. I am going to go through them. And if you want the answers, follow along. In fact, you're going to want to know how to do these problems. Oh, yes, you are. Because next week we have ourselves an academic adventure. Yes, we do. So we're going to have to know how to do these problems. Trust me, you. Ready? Wink, wink, wink. All right. So let's dive in. Um, I'll go right through these in terms of the, uh, in, the way they are set up. So we'll go through number one first. That has to do with the bank curve. The bank curve problem. Um, I introduced the bank curve problem last week without math. I was showing you where the centripetal force comes from on a bank curve. Now, if you haven't watched that, doggone it, go watch it right now. Go, 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 wait. Go ahead, go, wait. Okay, did you watch it? All right, good, because you need to know that. So I'm gonna fly through the first part of it because I already went through it on that video. So here we have a car going around a curve that's banked. Now, mathematically, how are we going to solve that? All right, so here's what it looks like. We'll draw our inclined plane. It's a triangle. Okay, our inclined plane. And the car is going into the board or into the curve. So you have to use your imagination. Wait a minute. Imagination. SpongeBob. And here is the back of the car. So this car is coming around the corner like this going and going into the uh, board at this point away from us. So the first thing I want to do is know what this angle is. That's going to matter. The larger the bank curve, the more centripetal force you get from it. Um, so problem number one, problem one. Um, a car has a velocity of 20 per second, mass is 2,000 kilograms, the radius of the curve is 100 meters, the curve bank angle is 20 degrees. So this is 20 degrees. All right. So first thing you do, if you remember from last video, is we draw a weight vector. Anything has weight, and that weight vector is going straight down toward the center of the Earth. Now, for every action, there's an equal opposite reaction. Actually, we're going to shorten this up just a little bit here. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I don't have much room up here, so I'm going to slide this down a little bit. And show, oops, no, not straight. Show that arrow going up. Now that's the equal but opposite push. You push on me, I push on you. That's what's happening here. The car's being pulled down into the road. The road says, ew, get away from me, and pushes back up on the car. So we can break down any vector, any vector, any vector into two components that make a right triangle. So let's go and break down this vector. This is the weight vector here. So I'll mark this as FW. But this is FW prime. I like using the symbol prime to mean the opposite of what I have next to it. So this is FW, FW prime, so equal and opposite. This is the weight, so is that. That's the weight but pushing up. So the road's pushing up on the car. And then part of that push, though, is we push up, goes over to the center, like that. Because really what's happening is the car is being pushed by the road like this. So we have an up and we have an over. This over right here is FC. Why is that FC? because it's pointing toward the center of the curve. This car is going into the table, which means over this way, there's a push toward the left, and that push is toward the center of this curve. And by definition, toward the center of a curve, if you have a force, it's centripetal, center-seeking force. This is a right angle. Okay, this is 20 degrees. If I want to do a vector analysis here, which I'm not going to want to do right now because we've done this before with inclined planes. If that's 20, this is 20. If that's 20, that's 20. 
So whatever the angle of the bank is, is the angle of that triangle. And doggone it, you're going to need it. So we've set up the problem. We now have the problem set up to go ahead and solve. Now what's this kind of, what are we trying to find? Okay, the question here is, would the car have enough centripetal force to make it around this curve? It says prove mathematically. What's this? The coefficient of friction between the tires and the road is 0 0.92. Hmm, friction, friction, I remember friction. I remember FF, okay, force of friction is equal to Fn times mu. That's our friction equation. And this car has uh, some friction as the tires in the road. And it tells me that because it says the coefficient of friction is 0.92. So I know that the dry asphalt and the rubber tires have a coefficient of friction of 0.92. So I could figure out how much friction the tires are providing if I use my friction equation. Now, the first thing I would have to do, though, is to solve that, is figure out what Fn is. Fn is ooh, this arrow right here. We all remember from our triangles, our banked curves, well, well no, our triangle problems, that this is also going to be Fn on the bank curve. Yeah, triangles don't go away. You're going to have one like this next week, so doggone it, write it down. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. So let's figure out what Fn is so I can put that into the equation and get how much friction force that I have in this problem. Now, why are we going to need to know that? Because we want to know if the car is going too fast. It's going around this bank curve. Is it going to be able to make it without flying off the road? And there are two things helping the car. Two things. One the friction from the tires, and two, the centripetal force from the push of the bank curve. That's a force, that's a force. The friction force is a centripetal force. It helps it go around a curve. Anything helping you go around a curve is centripetal force. So here's a source of centripetal force, and here's a source of centripetal force. Yes, 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 All right. Let's figure out this first source is the triple force. I need Fn. So let's do some, um, some math. This is the cosine, cosine of 20. That's adjacent, cosine of 20. The weight of the car is my hypotenuse in this triangle. Uh, let's see, what was the weight of the car? Well, the mass is 2,500. So 2,500 times 9.8 will give me the weight of the car, 24,500. So the weight of the car is 24. Five zero zero newtons. All right. Then, if I want to figure out what Fn is, now actually this problem is I'm doing I'm doing a, a simplified version of solving a bank curve problem. The bank curve problem is actually can get really complex if you want to be really accurate with what happens on a bank curve. But we're not going to do that much physics to solve it. So I'm giving you what I call close enough for government work solution. It's not exact, but it's going to be close enough to let us know if the friction force and the centripetal force are going to work together to help us go around the corner. Okay, it's, it, it, it is a little bit more, com more complex than I'm making it out to be. I mean, you might be saying to yourself, this is too complex for me. Ah, well, it can get a lot worse than this, trust me. Okay, and you can trust me because I'm not wearing a tie today. Not wearing a tie. Okay, so there's my, my, um, my weight. So the force over here, Fn, that's a cosine, a cosine of 20 times this hypotenuse. Um, if you don't remember how to solve for cosine, and you go back, we've done so many problems with them. So the cosine is equal to the, the uh, adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side will be equal to the cosine of 20 times 24,500. So 24,500 times cosine 20 and I come out with 23,022. So Fn is 23,022 newtons. Fn is 23,000. Okay, so I, can I get this in here? Yeah. 23,022 times 0.92. Multiply that out, and we'll have how much force we get due to the friction between the tires and the road. So 0.92 times 
23022 equals 21 one one eight zero okay I'm gonna circle that and keep that because I'm gonna need that see the question here is is will the car make it around this corner so there are actually two things that you need to figure out one is how much a centripetal force you have how much centripetal force is provided by the tires and the bank curve itself it provides some centripetal force Together, this is how much centripetal force provided. Okay, the other thing I need to know is how much centripetal force would I need going this fast, 20 meters per second, around this curve, radius of 100 meters. Okay? So how much centripetal force would this car need? And I'm going to compare the two. All right, well, let's figure out how much centripetal force we have first. So right now we have 21,180 newtons. Okay, put our unit on there. 80 newtons. Due to the friction, the centripetal force provided by the bank curve, we can get that right now. And it's not that difficult to do. All right, let's see. Let's, I'm going to use this room up here. Keep my friction calculation. Keep that right here and use this room to figure out how much centripetal force I have here. Here's a triangle, right triangle. You have 20 degrees. This side here is not the hypotenuse like it was down here. This side here, it, it's still the same number. This is 24,500. It's the weight. However, it's the adjacent side of the upper triangle as opposed to the hypotenuse of the lower triangle. So this side here, the adjacent side, 24,500, and I have the angle of 20, and I want to figure out what FC is. All right, let's see. Now, what function is going to work here? I want to figure out adjacent, or I, I, the opposite. That's the opposite. Here's my hypotenuse. I want to figure out the opposite, and I have the adjacent. Uh, some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. Taking oats away. Taking oats away. Tangent. Tangent is equal to... Tangent of 20 degrees is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Okay, so go ahead and plug it in. Tangent of 20 degrees equals the opposite, FC, over the adjacent, 24,500. 24, so to solve for the FC due to the bank curve, this is FC bank. The FC from the bank curve. This is the F force of friction, which is our, I'm going to change this to FC due to the friction. Multiply these two together. I'll have the FC provided by the bank curve. All right, let's see what we get. The tangent of 20. So tangent 20 multiplied by 24,500 equals 8917. 8917, 8,917 newtons of centripetal force is provided by that banked curve. Now, this is my total centripetal force provided by the bank curve and the friction, giving me the amount of centripetal force that I have available to try to make it around the corner. So I'm going to add those together, and it's 7, all right, and 9, we get 10, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, I usually wear a tie. I know earlier I said I'm not wearing a tie today, and you can trust me, but I would still, yeah, it's 30,097, so I did it right. Just checking out. Okay. This is the centripetal force provided. All right, centripetal force provided. 
by the sources that I have, friction and the bank curve. Now, how much centripetal force do I need to make it around the curve? How much do I need? Well, I don't need my bank curve here anymore. We've used it, we've done with it, so I can get rid of it. Taking up a lot of room on my board here, I'll leave the other forces and the totaled what we have available. I'll even get rid of this up here. Okay, so now at this point, we have the amount of centripetal force we are provided with. How much do we need? How much centripetal force would we need to make it around the curve? That comes from our centripetal force equation. Fc is mv squared over r. Very quite simple. To figure out how much I need, it's pretty, pretty, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy. So Fc is equal to the mass of the car, which is 2,500. Multiply by velocity squared, 20 squared. Divided by the radius of the turn, which is 100. So my Fc, if I do this math out here, cancel out some zeros. Uh, let's say it'd be 400 times 25. So 400 times 25 equals 10,000. 10,000 newtons is what I would need to make it around this corner going this fast. And you know what? What I need is a lot less than what I'm provided by my friction and the bank curve. So would this car make it around the corner? Piece of cake. No problema grande. It's got plenty of centripetal force to spare. We can go much faster. In fact, we could actually figure out how fast we could go around the curve. No, no, don't do that, please stop. All right, okay, we won't. But if we, if we were going to, we would take the centripetal force provided, put that in for FC, make this an X, and solve for how fast we could go and still make it around that curve. But okay, that, that, that's a different problem and not the problem that I gave you on the worksheet. So there is your bank curve problem. You will do one like this. We will be asked to determine whether or not the car makes it or not and prove it mathematically. Wasn't that fun?